Alrighty, so as I am getting, ooh, this is kind of fun. I can use my hands and talk at the same time. What a time to be alive. So um, as I'm getting these final bits set up, um, I'm going to go a little bit into the flow of this panel. Now this, sorry, uh, my computer is now live, so if it is not reading, let me know, Captain. Bet. Cool. Do people still say bet? Cause I, okay, cool. I, I really like that phrase. It, yeah, you know, it, it makes me happy. It, it makes my arthritis feel better. <laughs> uh, anyways, so this is going to be a live demonstration. Kind of think of it like a cooking show. Yeah, but because this is a live demonstration, I'm A-OK -okay with folks just yelling out questions. Um, I also understand what it's like to have anxiety and stage fright, which may seem shocking if you see me up here. Um, feel free to reach out to me and talk one-on-one -on, -one on anything afterwards. I 100% understand that talking in a crowd can be <laughs> like that. But um, what this panel is, and what's really funny is, oh, by all means, 100%. You're allowed to record, take photos, um, insult me, it's fine. I Twitch streamed for years. I appreciate it, because I think this might actually be streamed right now. So, PG-13. <laughs> PG-13. So, um, a little bit of background, quick intro. Hi, if you're at uh, opening ceremonies, my name is Courtney, Utopian Pigeon. Um, I have been doing wigs for far too long. Let's just say that. Um, <laughs> since before uh, Arda even existed, we were doing eBay wigs and splicing and praying. Sometimes you could even get stuff from Japan, and it's very exciting, but too small for your skull. There you go. Cost works for the folks that remember in the back. <laughs> um, this, I was in Ironwig in 2016. Um, I use this technique a lot in Ironwig. This actually is from my Ironwig, and you may be like, that kind of looks like shite. Why is it all beat up like that? Well, uh, it was in my storage unit for five years. And it's not conditioned, and it still looks this good. So good news. This technique really will take a beating. But we're going to go into specifically this type of technique. Um, it is a lot more simple than what you may think. And has anyone done, say, uh, glue fronts, modeling, wigs, fibers before? Awesome. So I'm going to say some things you guys already know. But we are going to be doing the live demo, and I can sh show you some techniques to keep it a bit cleaner. Big. Oh yeah, my first one was a, a beard and I look back at it and go Ugh. So I am going to hop into it once more If you got questions, feel free to shout them out This is very chill, think of it as family dinner Except we can't eat this So um, the things when it comes to doing this technique You need to have some sort of base depending on what you're doing Now that base can be something, this is by, the, uh, we're going to take two steps back and restart. Cool. You're going to have loose fiber. When it comes to doing your fiber, something that can be a lot easier is to just buy wefts because you don't have to deal with actual loose fiber. We will be doing loose fiber here, so if you just straight up cut up a wig, I'm going to show you how to do it cleanly because um, sometimes that's what you got. <laughs> we, I think most of us don't have quite the budgets to be buying a bunch of wefts, so maybe we do. I, I don't judge. But you're going to need some sort of fiber. This can also be done with wool. Um, it can be done with pretty much anything that's loose and has some sort of fibrous thing. Specifically, it needs to grab onto something. So you can't do something that's super smooth or silky. Um, specifically, uh, Arta Wig Silky. It works, but don't. You might as well just go for the regular because it just is a bit too smooth for it to stay there. So you got your wig fiber, then you're gonna need your structure. Um, this is literally felt with some cotton in it. I like to do something a little harder. And here, we're gonna dig right in here and see what I did in 2016. And here is a piece of, um, I actually only had a wig head on me, so I cut up a wig head with a kitchen knife and then wrapped it in fabric and hot glued it. Improvise, adapt, overcome, comrades. 
Um, the wings are craft foam, and they do have wire in them. I did that for stability and for paranoia, not actually needing it, but um, it did help to stab into the impromptu base. Because once more, if you kind of think of this for all my things, if you think of it like a prop, build the prop and then make it look pretty. Make it functional and structural and then build upon it. Now we get, look at this little guy. I mean, look at these wings. They're still, they're still holding on. They're doing their best. They're trying. They're thriving. <laughs> so let's hop into the demo. Um, when you're doing this, ew, I got dirt under my nails. That's gross. Mm. Okay, moving on. Uh, when you're doing this, I like to actually do this technique on aluminum foil. It is nice and smooth, and I guess this is a little teaser for later on. But it's nice, it dries well, it doesn't pick up any of the other fibers. However, you can also do this technique on felt, and it will glue itself to the felt. And then you can sew that on. This is really great with false hairlines because you want to have something a little softer here, especially if you're wearing this bad boy for like hours on end. You, you don't want it poking. You also don't want it to uh, start breaking apart. And then suddenly you have a very weird crack going up here and folks are like, genetics? Uh, what? So we're going to kick it off with this bag of loose fiber from my... Um, Amazon wig that I then dyed for Brewster on Sunday. If you want coffee, come find me. So as you can see, as I can now see, um, this is truly just a bunch of mess of fiber, just a hot mess. What you're gonna wanna do is carefully piece it out. Oh, you can also use plastic bags. So I just realized I've done that before and kind of forgot. So you get your loose fiber and with this, you can see, okay, yeah, you can see. Um, it is thicker up here and thinner down here. So what I like to do, one, I like to actually straighten it out if I can, but I don't have a straightener with me, so we're going to live, laugh, love this. I'm going to put pressure on the top, and I'm brushing out. As you can see, this just took out a bunch of fiber. This fiber goes into a little happy pile here and we'll come back to it later. I'm going to continue to brush it out till I get any additional loose fibers coming there. And then I'm gonna flip this bad boy around, go into the middle, rinse and repeat. Now, something that is tedious and painful and kind of annoying is you're about to use a glue that I'm gonna show you. And that is Clear gel tacky glue. I'm going to hold it up here, so if you do want to take a picture, this is your time. You can also find me afterwards, and I can just be like, hey, here's the bottle. It is cheap. It is sturdy. It lasts in a light rainfall, not a heavy rainfall. Um, it's actually still pretty good in cars in the southern heat. So once more, this guy, no AC in the south and a storage unit in Lexington, North Carolina, still did pretty good. I have not used Uhu, um, but I like the name. <laughs> I have done silicone, like caulk. Um, that's really good if you're doing something really hard. But uh, I would love to talk to you more about that afterwards, because live and learn, right? <laughs> but um, this is Allianz Clear Gel Tacky Glue. So it is incredibly easy, especially when working with loose fiber, for it to get messy quickly. What I'm about to show you is how you can make that mess not so messy. Uh, especially if you are a competitor, cleanliness is godliness. So be patient with yourself and be patient and always, 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 always do extra fiber. You're, get, make more than what you need because you want to pick the best of the best. And you may be like, well, why wouldn't I just glue this directly to the foam piece? And the reason why you want it is because we're essentially making wefts. But those wefts are glued. So as you can see, I poured a nice little bead right across it. And now I'm just giving a good pet. I have a lot of tension right here. If I was gripping something with my dirty ass nails, respectfully, um, my knuckles would be white. 
So I am pushing down and just petting it across. You're doing so good, buddy. I'm so proud of you. You're, you're a good wig fiber. But then it gets really gross, and that's, that's my least favorite thing. I like to actually have a wet cloth with me, and I just will uh, wet my hand, kind of clean as I go, because another thing is this guy will pick up your, um, your skin cells, and then you just get these little gross things, and you don't want those gross things on your hairline. Since we're not actually going to use this in the tutorial, I'm going to show you if you needed additional uh, pieces. Once more, you do that bead on the end, and then you continue on. You do it in very small sections. Because as you can see, this actually looks pretty smooth, right? We don't have any loose fibers just going around making circles and twirls in our uh, glue line. And then uh, you wait. Uh, think, yes. I like to do about two inches to three inches, but it depends on what you're making. Like if you're straight up cutting out the fibers and making, say, butterflies, because that's the easiest thing for me to explain. Um, if you're cutting out those wings, you would want to do all of it, but don't do it all at once. The reason why you don't want to do it all at once is because it's very easy for your fibers to start getting tangled up on themselves. So you let it dry for a night, come back, do another section. If you're doing a real long section, don't, but um, maybe you are. Maybe you're going to make a staff covered in hair. Listen, I, I did clear warbla and like twisted fiber into it and put it in an oven. Do what you got to do. It, it's, it's like yarn, essentially. If you think it like yarn, you get a lot of interesting tutorials. So you would let this dry, then do another two to three. You can. You can do more than that but it increases your risk of mess. And the messier it gets, well, it's just a bummer. Uh, any questions on this section? Because we're about to get to the, so here it is, 24 hours later section. Cool, bet. <laughs> wow, it's been 24 hours. <laughs> that's, that's so crazy, oh my goodness. Wow, another great thing with foil is if you're transporting it, you can just fold it up. <laughs> so this is actually a great example. Um, last night I realized someone may be like, why are you only doing two to three sections? Um, I did do all of this at one time. And you can see that there's actually some glue marks that are still there. It's just a little messier. You have more wave, it's not ideal doesn't mean you can't do it. So here is our section. I'm going to go over um, techniques for covering 3D pieces as well as doing false hairlines. I'm going to start with false hairlines. Now, um, with a false, everyone knows what a false hairline with glue is, right? We don't need examples? Cool. Love that. With um, false hairlines, this is my technique. There are other techniques out there. This is not the Bible, play and find out. Um, I will pull, eh, pop, pop, pop. okay. Uh, I will pull everything and essentially have the form on my wig ready, except for the front. So if you have a wig and it doesn't have a hairline, I steam it down. I will also actually take off the weft sometimes if I want it really flat and slick and just remove it, and then I will sew felt there. Um, the felt is a personal preference. You could do it directly to the wig, but the felt you can sew on, and it gives you that extra uh, stability. And extra stability means, hey, when you're walking around, you don't get that weird crack and weird questions. When it comes to removing this, especially if it's foil, gently peel it. Um, try not to crumple it like I did because you might actually pull up some foil pieces there. Not the end of the world if you do, because they tend to be on the ends. Um, I'm going to actually just take one small section of this. And this is why earlier I said make sure you have more than what you need because you can section it off. You can do bits and pieces time on time. Time after time. And I will prep it. So. 
I'm seeing what you see so we can talk about the same thing at once. There we go. You can see right here, um, I wouldn't call this an ideal section. This is probably something I would like to use for say a bird or something like that because I have some fibers going that way and then that way, that's not very natural. You want everything going in one direction unless it's a technique and you're like, hey, I like how that looks. That's cool. Or you're trying to do some sort of crossover, but for the most part, that's not the vibe. But I will take the section and these are uh, slightly serrated. And I think actually, yep, I got uh, resin on them because I treat my stuff well. <laughs> but um, so these are not super smooth. I prefer serrated. Smooth works fine. I just think with glued fibers, it gives you less slide. And that's what I want. So I will carefully. And you can see we're not going to use this section. Just slice here. Slice here. Pardon me while I concentrate. Another thing you can do, especially because we're not doing that, is once more you can cut off any excess that you definitely know you're not going to use because we're not using any of that. You can cut in one direction. You mix it up a little if you want. It's your life. That is the saga of today because it's just stuck in my head. It's my life. And then cut the other way. But you're essentially giving yourself a bit more of a natural hairline because people's hairlines, unless they have a really good barber and they're getting you know, lined up, um, they're not straight. People don't got have straight hairlines. They're, it just ain't it. Unless you're actually doing a cartoon character that has a straight hairline, in which case, they're drawn. They get to have that choice. From there, and one note is you may see that underneath it is a bit more loose. You can actually use this side and then secure it with glue. It is personal preference which side you want to show. Because under here, everything is still kind of stable. So this is personal preference. You can do a nice hairspray on this, let it sit for a sec so it gets a bit tacky. And for the next step, you could glue on this side or you can glue on this side. We'll be talking about glue because it's hot glue. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit more. And another note is like after you put this on, understand that you're still going to have to clean a little bit up of the hairline because you can even see right here, we still have some loose fibers that just decided to join the party. I had hairspray. Oh, there you are. Hi, friends. A uh, quick note about hairspray. We all know it. We love it. Sometimes it's a bit too much. Sometimes you don't need to be this person at the party. So a good flexible control is very nice to work with. I'm a sucker for Garnier Fructis, but that's because I like the smell. Any flexible control will work for you. Um, it's a two on the scale of like one to five. I also like a good four, and we'll pick that up later. <laughs> So right now I'm going to give it a nice little hairspray and once more give it a nice little pat down. You're doing very good, buddy. From here, if I notice any sort of like extra weirdness, I will brush it in the other direction, might be. Brush it in the direction that the glue is not going towards and pull out those fibers. Because once more, cleanliness is godliness and all that jazz and... You don't want random fibers popping up and making your day worse. So when you're doing your false hairline, we're going to step back. We have removed our wefts. We have added our felt, or we have done a steamer and pushed it back. But we got something to work with. Once you're up there, there are two things you can do, in my personal opinion. You can take some of this loose fiber here. You can scrunch it up. And you can give yourself kind of a base on top of your felt. That is something, it's an option. What I prefer to do is I will put the ever tiniest bead, the sweetest of beads of hot glue on here. And I do high temp. And sometimes I burn myself, so please be careful. Um, you don't want to end up with a first or second degree burn. It's not fun. 
even right now my fingers are like, no, that don't do that. That's not great. Um, I will do a bead here and I will press it right onto the felt on the hairline. And I'll hold it and it'll dry. And we go, good job, proud of you. From there, I will take a uh, alligator clip, not one of the big guys, one of the little silver ones, and I will hold it to the wig. Oop, baby, come back. No, thanks, appreciate it. Um, from there, I build on. So I will now grab, we're gonna pretend that I've hot glued this, it's hanging here. I got a nice little clip up there holding it so it doesn't get moved. And we'll go back to our line. And go, and I kind of look around, I'm like, who's gonna be my friend? You're gonna be my friend. And you can even see, these are like little baby triangle pieces. They're not huge pieces. If you get a really good run on a piece, awesome. Go for it, it's great. But little pieces are better because you tend not to have a flat you're doing it on a curve. So that curve is gonna help you build up to get that false hairline and not have it break or look unnatural. Each of these little pieces is another section of your hairline. Yeah. Cool. So once more, we pet it, we take that loose fiber and we say, have a nice day. We go, that's kind of funky looking. Heck, if you wanna do some Medusa hair, there you go. Cut it, we'll pretend we didn't win. And then the nicest of little hot glue pieces there. And we would slightly layer it over. Oh, sorry, move hand. Um, we'll slightly layer it over and then angle. So if you're looking at it, we actually have a V. You don't have to go that hardcore of a V, that's just as a demonstration. But these would get pinned and you would go around. Once you have a good base, I like to go back and I give it a nice light hairspray to set it. And then I give it a farther away hairspray to stick it. If you are doing something, which I'm going to have to pull this up as an example. Um, welcome to Brave. Welcome to Wings. Wrong panel. Um, let's just do Iron Week 2016. That'll be easy. Oop, there we go. Hey, there's the bird. So if you look at the top here and right here, um, this is what you would do. By the way, it is done with this technique. I actually went back after I sprayed it and set it, and then I put clear tacky glue on it. Um, I threw that guy in a cardboard box, and it's still surviving. The bird did it. There's actually the bird right there. There's that guy. He's, he was cute once. He had dreams. The other bird's doing fine. But yes, underneath here is a uh, insulation foam block covered in red felt that was sewn to the wig. And then I did this technique where it's just gluing and patience and careful petting. A lot of petting. So much petting. But you do light hairspray in small sections and you build it up and that's how you're going to get something I did know I could earn points. Thanks, Arda. Something so clean that it looks natural. This part, all glue, this part is a mix of setting it with this and far away, not up close, up close clumps, far away sets. If you want it to clump, that, that's your prerogative, but I didn't. Yeah. And also, hey, look, false hairline. There you go. Right there, you can see the tiny little pieces crossing over. You can also see right here what happens uh, if you do too much of a section at once and it can start breaking. It doesn't look awful, but not ideal. So yeah, literally, here's every single section. All this is hot glued, and then it was pinned up here. Um, any questions on this point before we go into what it would take to make a bird? What you got? Mm-hmm. Oh, that? Um, the funny story about that is I deconstructed the wig, and that is actually the skin cap. Yeah, uh, the reason that this side doesn't have a skin cap, one, um, I found out you could do a chain braid, which if you want to talk about that, we can talk about it later, because they look sick, dude. Takes a lot of fiber, though. Um, yeah, that was my little trick of I took the scalp, the little, and just sewed it here. 
that looks incredibly natural. However, you can actually do this technique and uh, the specific glue technique or ventilate and get the same effect. Um, you can have a skin cap, use that as your base, or you can even do a uh, felt that matches your skin tone. That's another way too, but um, you'll still have to have some sort of meat up here to make it look more natural because folks aren't going to get up close enough to be like, why is your skin furry? You know, everyone has hair on their skin. I know it is like rude. Come on, man. What hair as a human in, in this economy? <laughs> what? I didn't know humans were mammals. It's wild. <laughs> so um, let's talk about 3D things. Let's talk about you. We're doing great here. Um, when it comes to this, I would do the exact same technique, but we're going to bring over um, Hugin over here. We had Hugin and Moonin. That was the theme of that wig, was Odin. And you may be like, so what happened here? So up here, by the way, you can pet him afterwards. I used clear tacky glue. Over here, I only used um, got to be. And the got to be did not hold after years, obviously. But the tip was glued, and I didn't use enough glue. Now, that's on me, boo. But how I did this was a hair elastic. The actual fibers of this beak, we're just going to kind of go through the techniques in here. The actual fibers of this beak went out to about here. I glued it around the elastic to be able to get a very nice point. And I had the biggest pain in the butt because when you do anything with a hair tie, it likes to do this. So pretty much did that elastic and then pet it down, just pet, pet, pet. This guy obviously glued. I'm actually kind of, wow, you're doing great, buddy. Get on. But yeah, a lot of clear tacky glue right here. The rest of it was hairspray, and hairspray over time will do this. That's okay. Because the thing is, for the most part, when you're doing shapes like this, you don't want to do the whole thing as tacky glue. You can. It's super, I know, right? It might seem weird. Um, tacky glue is shiny. Any glue is shiny. Got to be glued is shiny if you use it in a certain way. Most times you want to have a semi-shine, a nice little matte, something like this, right? You want to have it look a bit more natural. So how you achieve that when it comes to something like this? Oh, hey, look, there's the foam. Hey, buddy. Hey, pal. Um, you do that glue technique like a false hairline at the top, and you do it at the bottom like I just said with the elastics, but in the middle, you just do hairspray. As you can see, there is no hot glue in the middle of this. I had glue at the top. I had glue at the bottom. The rest was carefully hairspraying and petting it down and going from there. By having these be secured, you can get that softer look while still being stable enough to not fall apart however you use it. You can also add additional layers to hide different... Yes? Uh, for the wig fibers or for the wing? For like the actual, like, wig fibers. Oh, yeah, with that. Um, if it was longer, I would probably do a layer of actual hard. So, like, I would do an entire layer where it is the hard tack, like, and then do the softer layer. Likely, maybe in the middle, do a little bit, but I wouldn't do it in a straight line. I would do it in sections. So, I would do it here here, here, kind of mix it up. If I was being aesthetic with it, I might put rhinestones in those sections or some sort of matching thing. If you're trying to be creative, if you're trying to actually recreate something on someone's head, because this can also be used for ponytails. Um, I did a League of Legends wig, the singing chick with the big... Thank you. Great music. Um, I did her wig, and the entire top was actually straight up glued while the bottom was soft and flowy. So you can use the same technique, but that's one of those where I had to because it had too much tension, so I went flat. If I wanted to keep it soft, then yeah, I just would do bit, 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 kind of go from there. 
Because most people aren't going to know. They're not getting, unless they are literally judging you. And if they're judging you, they're going to understand. But from five feet away, you're perfectly fine. Good question. Appreciate that. And remember, when you have seams, you can always use fiber to hide those seams. And hot glue is great. Don't, don't sleep on it. Don't burn yourself, but don't sleep on it. Another note is when it comes to things at the end, don't be afraid to let it be loose. It does invite the option for more stress and torque being put up here. I don't know if torque's the right word, but that just came out. But have it be loose. It gives a very nice effect. You can have a nice little fan. You can still do a nice hairspray to keep it in place and fresh updates, but you don't have to have things be a helmet. Sometimes you need it. You don't have to. So if I was doing... Say this guy was going to be, I don't know, what, what does this look like? What creature? Like a ladybug? Turtle? Turtle? Beetle? Ooh, beetle would be fun. I like a turtle, but we're going to go for, actually, we're going to talk about both. Because turtles have those uh, shapes on them, right? Like soccer balls? Cool. Let's talk about both. If I was doing a turtle... What I would do is I would make these pieces and I would cut them out in shapes and put them on either foam or felt, probably felt, and just make all those little individual pieces. So if you're competing in iron wig, write this down. They would love that. So individual pieces and then place them on here, kind of like you would do if you're doing wings or um, tapestry quilting. You lay out all your pieces, stick them down. Then... I would do that, okay, because so, we'd need a head, right? Turtles have heads, unless we're just doing a shell and he's scared. So you do the head, much like a false hairline. We would put it over here. By the way, this guy can bend. And a fun little technique you can do is when you're gluing, especially with foam, you can glue it into a shape. So you can do the glue onto here. What I like to do is once more, I always have fiber, extra fiber at the end and the back. I use those little clip things I 100% left in the room. Clip them down, do that bend, and then when you pull it, it already has the shape that you need. So we could do that, have that ready. We would hot glue it on. We'd give a nice little boop. Pat it, let it dry, maybe use a hair dryer because we're impatient. Come back, give a hairspray hairspray, get a uh, heavier set glue. That's actually what I like to use uh, silicone for. I will also use this, but um, I've also used E6000. Don't do that. It's toxic. Learned a lot, let's just say that. Um, but you could use an epoxy if you really want to be hardcore and like have something that could stab somebody. But some sort of hard glue for those points. Cool, so then we'd have the skull. Then you could either glue or sew on the felt with all those little pieces of the shell. You could then take fiber, roll it. By the way, if you're rolling something where it's like this guy or these guys, I think you can just roll it and use hairspray. And once more, you're petting it down to get any loose fibers or, or loose hairs out. Could do that around your edges. You could also do the glue technique and have these be like little lines that you could do as infill. So in between those different uh, pieces of the shell, just do, there we go, perfect, boop. These are getting tossed afterwards, so if anyone does actually want some random green, I, I can give it to you, you can play with it. It's all you, boo. So you could uh, glue down or even sew down, kind of like a uh, gold work where your couch, you could just couch it down, think of it like that. It also look nice. So there's a lot of different options when you start thinking this like foam or because you're making hard pieces. Sky's the limit. I made a freaking uh, entire thing of butterflies on wire. So I had floating wire butterfly uh, hair pieces. You can do that. But if we were doing a beetle, now beetle would be fun because you could do wired wings. Right? How sick would that be? So, oops, sorry, friend. So let's think about it. And by the way, if you guys got ideas on this beetle made out of wig fiber, let's go. So we'd make the body right here. And probably would have done it in foam like this guy because you want something a little more stable that you could actually wire into. 
make our wing and then cover it in that uh, fiber, maybe take a second piece so we can build and layer on it, do a hard cut, go around the edges. What you got? It might. Could you take um, iridescent fibers like, um, from like a wool tinsel? or something and brush it in with yep. like so that it made it iridescent? Mm -hmm. That's ah. a, I, I was trying to figure out how to do that, and you just came up with a solution. Like, mix them and it, right? Yeah, because it's one of those, if you're doing all of them, this technique wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. But if you're mixing it in with the fiber, it's going to stick. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, hey, I respect that fairy energy. Go. <laughs> or club energy if the it's the 90s and thousands. I don't know. Do they still wear glitter in the clubs these days? Good. I love that. Good for them. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, so yeah, we can make those wings. We can put in the iridescent feathers. We could use a different wig fiber for underneath. So the body could be a different color wig fiber. For the eyes, I mean, if you really wanted to go off, you could try to do button covers made of wig fiber. It'd be a pain. I wouldn't recommend it. But um, just kind of off the top while we're here, because this is mostly the demo. I didn't bring enough hot glue to actually show you guys, so I apologize. I have my gun and no glue. We're doing great. Um, when it comes to wig fibers, you can also think of it like basket weaving. If you can do it with basket weaving, you can do it with fiber. I have seen people um, make fake tool out of wig fiber, which is literally you lay it out and you glue and you individually do a heavier glue on each of those points or you sew it together. Um, there, once you start not thinking of it as hair, you can do a lot more with it. Um, I guess, I guess technically, yeah, you could. I feel like it'd be a little difficult to crochet or knit wig fiber, but yeah. If you do a hairnet, that would definitely be a feasible option. And then you could have a knitted hair. Oh. I like that. Okay, okay. We, we all got to now look up Roman hair techniques and try to avoid the not Roman hair techniques, but they say it's Roman hair techniques. I'm looking at you, TikTok. <laughs> they got my algorithm now. Um, but yeah, you can do basket weaving. You can do braids. You can also, when it comes to these type of things, for your wigs, build it not on the wig, build it off the wig, and then attach. Once more, that felt, felt your friend, felt sews, felt as soft, and felt also as grippy. Um, if you are doing any of this, though, be kind. Rewind. Don't stick it in your car. Don't leave it in your car. Once more, even if you have wings, don't leave those in your car. And I need to talk to you about your wings at some point. They're beautiful. I love them. Everybody, shout out to this person that's getting pointed out for their beautiful wings. You'll love to see it. But, yeah, um, Q&A time. We got some time. What you got? And we'll go around like that. Yes. Um, zigzag. So it, the question was, if you only have so, sh great example. Say you have this, and you only have like these guys, right? What you can do. The thing is, when you get close, you're going to see it. There's no way around it. But you do this section. Then you do this section. This way. And then think of it like brickwork. So you're doing brickwork there. Because if you do hard lines, like you could do a piece of felt and then... But think of it with the hard lines. People see hard lines and they're like, that's a break. 
But when they see these more natural zigzags, they think, oh, no, that's, I don't know what's going on there. So my brain's just going to think it's regular hair. Yeah. Um, before I get to you, I believe you had a question in the back. Yeah. Yeah. So the trick with that is when you are doing this, first off, small sections goes a really long way. Um, have a warm, wet towel. And between things, you got you to gotta get the glue off your hands. You're going to have no dead skin cell on your hand after this. It's great. It's the weirdest exfoliation that you can do. Probably not. I don't know. They, they have fish that eat your feet. So that's probably the... Moving on. Um, <laughs> Woohoo. Go team. Um, but yeah, that's how you avoid that. Um, you can still see on here where I tried to do... Oh, let's show what happens if you put a log glue on. We have some loose fibers here. I don't know if you can actually... Yeah, you can kind of see it right here. So we're going to move, and you can see that there's just loose fibers. Other things that I have done, um, especially if I'm on a time crunch, is I will tweezer out, which is freaking crazy. You're like, you're on a time crunch, and you're doing that, but it is quicker than actually redoing another line of hair. So I will tweezer out that hair, and then I will take a warm washcloth and smooth it down. That cleans out any uh, numbins. That's the official term. You can go to their website. It doesn't say that. But that is the official term. Um, and it'll clear it away. I actually had to do that quite a bit with the uh, wig I showed earlier. And now. Oh, do you have an additional question on that? Or are you good? Well, we'll come back. Sharing is caring. We can talk one-on-one, -on -one too. That is a fantastic question. It does, let's see, it does have the, you can focus, my friend. <laughs> Baby, come back. Wish I could manually focus, but here we are. So you, I can show you afterwards as well. This actually still does very much look like fiber. Um, what helps is making sure the fibers you're using are not exactly one color. Having some sort of dimension gives you that effect of, oh, it's not a stick of plastic, it's actually hair. So it's still texture, it becomes texture in the It varies, you can pet it, and it's nice. It, it's, a, it's a nice feel. You would be painting it. Um, you could dry brush to try to I mean, you ain't dry brush, you'd just be brush. Uh, like, d you just paint it. Um, if you wanted to add more texture, that's one of those where I'd actually say, have your loose fiber underneath of your structure because it'll give you some, like, things that will sneak out that you can mess with. It looks a little messy, but it looks more natural because people have baby hairs. That's actually the one thing is folks have baby hairs. They don't have perfect hairlines unless, literally, they have a great barber and then I go... How do you do that fade? I've been trying for years. <sighs> One day. Cut your own hair. Save money. <laughs> yeah, does that make sense? Yes, it does. Cool. Um, before we come back to you, does anyone else have additional questions? What you got? I don't know the character, so let me look them up. Oh, nice. Hey, what's your Instagram? Oh, I was just going to, like, say it, so. Kabath walks. I'll, I'll trust you on that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, drill curls, too. Um, I'm going to throw in with something similar. So this is how I would do it. I'd use aluminum wire, um, maybe an 11 gauge aluminum wire. As the internal structure, I'd use either packing tape or felt. Um, probably just a nice little blue felt because she has that little extra oomph in there. Um, do a hard, I want to actually do a hard inside. I do something a bit more soft, like what we we're saying, that looser fiber, maybe even tease it a bit to give it a little something to grab onto. And then what you would do, you can, I, I want to even actually use this technique for that. Um, use, use your boy. Oh, I don't have the camera on. Use your boy. Because um, the wire, which, are, are you good on wiring into a wig? Like, we don't, okay, cool. Um, the wire there, when it goes into your base and goes up, is going to keep it up. Because that's the same thing with drill curls. Um, by the way, this technique is very similar to what's used with many drill curls. It's literally just wire, tape, or felt, and then you do the glue around slowly. But it's the same thing where they actually usually have to do the piecemeal, which that's how I learned how to. Or no, you're the one who asked? Yeah, sorry, might be. We're doing great. It's the glasses. I just, we, we all, we're glass gang. Woohoo. <laughs> So yes, uh, if you do that messy teasing underneath, it gives the fiber something to grab onto. It gives you a little more fluff, and then you can just slowly pet to get that smoothness. Um, I'd also make it removable. Maybe, yeah, magnet or a pipe. Because you could use, the, yeah, that way if you need to clean it up or transport it, then you can just bag your wig. Especially if you're doing like crimping or just a nice little piece thing, that'll be fine in a bag. And then uh, have your pipe or your magnet in that bead and attach right there. Um, with magnets, I still like to do some sort of hook in there. Unless you're using like really good rare earth magnets. Rare earth mag magnets are fine. They're wonderful. They are chef's kiss. Yeah. Any other questions on that? All right. Who's up next? We got about five more minutes before I want to let the other person. Oh, wait. It's Dumpster Fireside Chats next, right? No? Is it? Is it? I think so. Yeah. Oh, and then hell. So we have fireside chats in the hell. So we, we got some more time. Any other questions? Any projects? What you got? You know, I actually can do you one better. I have my build book for it. So let me show you exactly how I did it. Um, let's see. Cosplay reference. Hi, here's my secret uh, reference book thing of gigabytes of data. Make sure you keep your folders organized, friends. Um, let's go to wigs. Here we go. Actually, here's all my build stuff for it. So if, oh, I was going to talk about this. Might be. Um, I made clear horns out of clear warbler, put the fiber on it so it glowed from the inside. So that is 100% a thing you can do. There's the clear warbler and... Uh, just throwing that out there, be creative. That is using this technique right on. It didn't stick great, so I had to use a lot of hot glue on the edges to keep it there, but yeah. Yeah, just filled them with lights, and then I used uh, glitter just to give it a bit more of a vibe in the daytime. But let's go to this guy. Here we go. So, oh bird. Right here, you can actually see where I did the glue and I uh, pinned it. And can you say your question one more time because I got distracted by horns? Oh, yeah, the top part. Yeah, so what I did, you can actually see this entire piece here is glued. But you may notice that for the most part, that is hidden by the fibers that go over it. This entire piece was a, that was my foundation. And you can see, hey, there, there's the foam. And oh, shoot, I didn't realize, I forgot, I used uh, piping in there and then put felt on top. Eh, we're doing great. Um, 
right here you can see this is loose fiber. That's actually how I started doing the hairspray. So this right here, hard. This right here, loose fiber that I'm just literally laying on top. Then pinning and spraying. All this was not actually glued. In fact, how to keep a long wig from becoming a tangled mess? Braid everything. Starting from the top, carefully braid the wig down. Yeah, I had to duct tape the wig to the head, wig to the stand. But it was just piece by piece. Set it, let it dry. Do, I did uh, one layer, two layers, distance. And it worked well. Anytime, and because you're going so slow and you do that light setting one, you can pull any loose fibers then. The reason you do a light one is to give yourself that grace to have any fibers to clean up. In fact, I used this comb right here. You can tell how old it is. It's still going. Just a nice little, not hard, but soft pet. Just a, oop, sorry, buddy. A nice, soft pet. Any other questions on that part? Cool. I have actually other tutorials or any other questions I can answer, or we can call it and you get five more minutes of your life to uh, get ready for dumpster fire ch side chats or hell. Or there's another, I think there's a workshop going on right now. I don't know. We're doing great. No more questions? Be free! <laughs> Woo!